Today we're going to look at adding a database into the mix. So we're going to take our historic sensor readings that up until now we've just been printing in the terminal and we're going to add all of them to a database stored on disk on the Raspberry Pi. So for this I've decided to use SQLite. Um, SQLite is a lightweight RDBMS. Um, lightweight in the sense that it uh, doesn't require a separate server process to be invoked um, in order to use it so it's uh, it's different to MySQL or PostgreSQL in that sense it may be lightweight but it's still functional enough and certainly feature rich enough for our needs so this will allow us to create a database that's stored right on the Raspberry Pi and our plan here is to add code to our existing sensor reading application that will allow us to do just that. Right. So the first thing is that the SQLite requires that you initialize a connection to your database. So we need to first tell SQLite what is the database object that we're working with and we need to create a, an, a cursor object which allows us to interact with that database. So we'll invoke the cursor every time we're actually making changes to the database. So the first thing we look at doing is to declare a connection, which I'll call con, an instance of SQLite 3.connect. And then we tell it the path to our database, like so. Now that we know what our database is, we also want a cursor. So the cursor is going to allow us to actually interact with the database, add and remove data and so forth. Of course, we need to import SQLite. Great. So now that we have a connection and a cursor, we're able to start um, declaring and creating the actual tables inside of our database. So I'm going to create two tables, one for all of our sensors. Now, at the moment, we only have two sensors, but with the idea that this project is expandable pretty much indefinitely if you have um, a large number of sensors then you can then you can measure across a wider area it'll be a, a, a more complicated and, and laborious hardware installation process but the, the the software would remain more or less the same so I want to create a table that houses the two sensors that we have now and the, the information about which pin they're connected to but this can obviously be expanded upon eventually if we have um, a higher number of soil moisture, temperature, and humidity sensors, and perhaps even sensors measuring other parameters, wind speed, um, for instance, or, or a, a light sensor to measure how many hours of, of daylight we have per day. We, you know, there's a there's a lot of expansion that can be added to this if uh, we desired. So we're going to um, using our cursor, we're going to execute a create table command um, first for our census table and then for the table that's going to contain our sensor readings so with this you use your cursor that we've created up there and you do c dot execute and now inside of c dot execute we have to do direct sqlite commands so the the, the actual sqlite language that will be um, creating tables selecting from tables um, or adding to tables adding rows to tables all of this needs to occur inside of um, essentially formatted strings that contain the direct SQLite commands themselves so I'm going to create three quotes there and start with create table and that'll be sensor we want to specify each column inside of that table as well as the data type. So we're going to have a column for the date that the sensor was added and the data type of that would be text. We're going to have another text column um, that provides a sensor name or description and then we're going to have a column for which pin that sensor is connected to that is an integer. Right, so um, essentially you can define as many columns as you like, but I, I only need these three. And we're going to do the same for our second table. So you would do this for as many tables as you need. So now we create a table called 
reading and then the actual sense of value which is real what python would call a float in sqlite that's called a real value a real number value so all of the data types and how to invoke them are listed in the docs and uh, it's got quite a few um, examples and tutorials inside of the docs for how to build what you're looking for oh, there we go text so sqlite supports only text integer real blob and null formats blob would be um, just a piece of raw data which could be anything you could put a block of json or um, anything in there but uh, sqlite doesn't interpret that it'll output that completely raw a null value as the name suggests is a nothing and then text integer and real would be the three types that you work with most often so it doesn't have things like date time objects and so forth and that is why i'm adding my date object simply as text so we'll have to manually uh, we'll have to convert our current date and time object into a string before we can add it into this table now that we've added our two tables let's start to add some data to those tables um, first i want to add some census to the database so that add date there i'm going to define as being a string instance of time dot date dot today and to do so we actually need to import date time as well okay so now that we have our add date object we have everything that we need to execute two insertions into the table and that we use the SQL commands insert into so insert into and our table name which is sensor we insert values now as a placeholder for each one of the columns inside of the database you create those three question marks sort of a formatted string in that format string there and now we add additional parentheses containing the actual data that we're adding so that is add date to the first column which we've just defined above and the first sensor would be our dht11 maybe just a short description saying that it's temperature and relative humidity and we're adding the pin that that is connected to in this case dht pin which we've declared over here now let's do the same for our soil moisture description this one is a yl69 soil moisture sensor soil moisture sensor the variable we declared as yl channel for pin 21 so it'll output 14 and 21 as our pin numbers in the table. And that's it. So these are the two sensors we have for now. Um, and now that we've created our two tables and added our sensors into the first table, the only thing that remains is to populate our second table, which needs to take the actual readings. We make it part of our while true over here. So we make it part of our while loop in so this will be again a c dot execute with insert into reading we insert the word temperature to specify which one and the value is variable we've stored up top as temperature and we're going to do the same thing for humidity and moisture why you do this to me why you got to do me like this hmm? over there please and over there please no 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 you see because obviously not 
You're the worst. Thank you. Why is it all looking like this? And now, the thing is that we our variable moisture above here is only string. It's a which would uh, SQLite would interpret as a text value, and we can't be adding text because we declared this column at the end to have a value which is real. So. I need to have a real value to add in here. So as sort of a placeholder, because our moisture values, because our moisture sensor is giving a digital output, only giving us a one or a zero to tell us yes, we have moisture or no, we do not. Um, the zero actually being yes, we have moisture and the one being no, we do not. Um, the reverse workings of that uh, YL69 switch. Um, we can't add moisture to the last value here because we're looking for a real number value. So I'm going to define another variable here, which can be sort of a placeholder. Let's call it moisture DB. And I'm going to initialize it as either a one or a zero. So when we have sufficient moisture, let's add a one to the database. And obviously when the moisture is low, you guessed it, we make it zero. And now we have something that we can add to here that won't break or give us any errors. Um, but perhaps we should make it clear in our description that one means sufficient moisture. And zero means that we're dry. And a zero means that we're dry. Okay. So now that we have the structure for adding all of these uh, readings to tables, um, what would happen is that the cursor, the cursor itself is going to sort of be a placeholder for each of these SQLite commands, but the cursor itself does not invoke changes to the database. For that, we need to use our connection. So all of the changes that have occurred here, what we now do is we connect um, or we, what we now do is we use our connection to commit the changes. And for that, we run con.commit. And uh, you'd run this after all of the changes that you want to make. Since that's those c.execute lines, they are the last changes I'm going to perform to the database. I can commit them. Then I can close the connection. Similarly to if you're working with a file, um, like a text file or something. Um, in Python, you always have to close the connection to that file. And now we have what we need to be able to add things to the database. Um, that time.sleep uh, should go to the bottom of our operations over here. Right now that value being 30 seconds, but in actuality, you'd likely want to make that maybe a once a day or twice a day sort of situation. Now let's see if all of that actually worked. So now we run it. We'll still print our reading to terminal. It's supposed to simply create it for me. So why are you going to do me like this? Hmm? What does it work here, but not here? What the f*** <coughs> does that mean? So when we first run it, we see our readings pop up. And uh, now that the reading is displaying on the terminal, we know that the steps after it, being our execution of values into the database tables, should have occurred as well. So I'm going to go ahead and interrupt this. And if we do an ls now, we see that pyplant.db has been created. So that is our... Um, that is the database that we told it to create, so that's a good sign already. But let's see if we use some SQLite commands directly inside the terminal. We should be able to look inside with dot tables. It shows us that readings and sensors has been created. And if we select all from our sensors, and remember to add a semicolon, then we see that both of our sensors are there with the added date. And if we similarly select all from readings, from would be better, select all from readings, 
then our first three readings that we've taken there have been added in. So there we have it. We now have a small database right on disk which will store every new reading our sensors on the Pi um, are taking. And with those readings you can sort of build an idea of historical data. You could build some graphs with it or what we would like to do. What we'd like to do in our case is to eventually be adding this to a web application um, user interface that allows a, a CRUD um, functionality. So to create, read, update and delete readings and sensors from our database tables. The next step would be to simplify and streamline this code a little bit by using something called an ORM. So an object relational mapper will allow us to map all of these SQLite queries in this sort of language. We'd be able to map this directly as Python objects. So essentially it allows you to create functions and classes inside of Python that you use to interact with your database directly. So I'm going to update this coding in the next installment. Until then, keep learning things the hard way.